I'd like to now introduce Professor Eric Schott, and he is with the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai and Monday's State of the Art speaker. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I know that you've been talking a lot in your presentation about kind of the, the technology, higher resolutions now. Give us some examples. Let's talk about some of the things that the highlights of your presentation. Yeah, I think, you know, when you think of the biology of old, we were left you know, looking at a single gene at a time or a single protein at a time because that's what technology enabled us to do. Today, we have these amazing technologies where we can sequence an entire human genome now for around $1,000. We can look at all the different metabolites in your system, you know, uh, in populations of individuals at a given time. So what we're able to do now is create a much more holistic picture of what's going on in a system such as a human system that that uh, you know, how are we normally put together? What happens when things go awry to cause disease? We're actually able to to have that really high-dimensional view of your system, uh, which is a complete change from where things were, say, 20 years ago. And looking down the pipeline, the future, maybe even the near future, talk about some of the things that we can do just to examine our own health and kind of have the the DNA makeup technology-wise. Right. So, you know, first of all, lots of legislation has passed that now gives you. Uh, direct access to your own medical records. So you can now go in and retrieve your entire electronic medical record and what you can start doing with that information is connecting it to things you can now score, traits you can score on yourself uh, using wearable mobile devices. So whether it's a you know, jawbone up or a Fitbit monitor, you know, measuring your activity, your heart rate, your blood pressure, glucose levels, and so on. You know, we can start generating all the different physiological measures we can monitor now in an individual in real time over the course of, of weeks or months or years. And you can take that information, connect it up to your electronic medical record information. You can go to companies like 23andMe and have your genome sequenced uh, to understand how are changes in your DNA that you may have been born with, predisposing you to different diseases. And again, that information can be integrated with your electronic medical record and, and your wearable device information. And again, the idea is creating a holistic profile on yourself where the high-end analytic, you know, data analytics people like myself can help start guiding, you know, based on your profile, what are you most at risk for? What are the activities you can be involved in to minimize that risk? Or if you have a disease, what are the best treatments for you? So you can kind of have that guide, that lifelong guide, the GPS. The GPS, right. You can think of it as a navigation system, right? So the, if you think of you know, navigating mountains of, of wellness and valleys of sickness and it's a complex uh, landscape, uh, you know, the, if you can have a GPS that's helping you guide you, you know, avoiding disease uh, valleys and going into wellness mountains, you know, those are the sorts of uh, guidance that is going to be possible in the not so distant future. Is this welcomed technology? I think it's, uh, you know, remains to be seen how, you know, the public will embrace this. I think on the on the clinical side, on the physician side, and the research side, we see it as very exciting because, again, it's creating a more accurate picture of an individual, enabling us to better diagnose at higher resolution what's going on in an individual and how best to treat that individual. And so the end result of that will be better outcomes. It's hard to uh, believe that you know the average uh, citizen who can have access to this technology won't embrace and appreciate that because they'll ultimately live a longer life. But there are issues regarding privacy and uh, the protection of that information and whether insurers can use that against you. So it's not without uh, you know, some things that we're going to have to work through as a society. Are we looking at this a year from now, five years from now? What's the timetable? Or is it just kind of coming in bits and pieces along the way? Exactly. I think it's like one of these gradual, or I wouldn't say it's so gradual, yeah. it's sort of an accelerated, punctuated uh, equilibrium evolution that I think we're going to look back five to ten years from now and it's just going to be the way it is and we won't necessarily be able to point to any you know, place and time where that switch was thrown. It's starting today, you know, with cancer, you know, personalized cancer therapy trials where we're looking at all the things that are specific to an individual to understand what's driving their tumor and what are the best treatments that they'll respond to. And we can even make personalized vaccines, right, specific to a given individual. That's happening today. And that'll just keep evolving into, you know, Alzheimer's and diabetes and transplant and all of these different areas will begin you know, benefiting from that kind of thinking over the next five to ten years. Very nice. All right, Professor Schott, thank you for your time. Yeah, well, Appreciate thank you. It. Thanks.